There we go. Hello, everybody out there in the Jubaverse. We're going to get started with the planetary call in just a minute or two. Uh, depending on where you are, maybe you're watching the Discord. What's going on for the cat that's in the Discord? Maybe you're watching on YouTube. Uh, shout out to everyone over there. We just crossed, by the way, 3,000, uh, 3,300 subscribers over on YouTube. Not bad. It's coming together pretty quickly. Uh, or maybe you're watching on Twitter. Wherever you are, uh, greetings to you, wherever in the world you are. Let us know in the chat where you're actually calling in from, because uh, I love seeing how kind of global these calls get every single time. We'll give people a minute or two to join the call, make sure that they are ready to go. I know we're missing one or two speakers here as well, uh, but you know, it's all on the surface, kind of maximizing these Juke for Juke vibes over here. We gotta keep high. There we go. What the hell? <laughs> Let's go back to hybrid. Nope. I mean, <coughs> It's gone, gone crazy here. <laughs> All right, cool. So the Jupe vibes have been maximized, folks. If you're there, drop a little JM in the chat aggressively. Maybe drop it once, maybe drop it two, maybe three times as well uh, for Jupiter morning. Uh, that pie is bacon as we continue to grow it. And with that said, we can actually officially kick this off Hello, hello, hello to everyone out in Jupe land and welcome to this, the Jupiter Planetary hello, hello. Meows all around. Do you want to give a little meow? The people love the meows. Meow, meow. As good as an actual cat over there. It is uh, April 10th, 2024, and now we're going to get meows the entire call, so you're all welcome for that. Uh, I will be, uh, we'll start off the same way we always start off here, which is with the unofficial cadet theme song. <laughs> What's going on, folks? Drop a little J for J in the chat wherever you are. I know we have at least one person here from Indonesia. Shout out to Kevin. 10 p.m. still coming to the planetary call. That's what we like to see. Uh, if you don't know I'm me also, already, I'm, I'm, I'm also on the general Discord, um, general chat. So you know, if you guys are on Discord, come talk to me there. Yeah, jump over there as well. Listen to the man himself. If you don't know me already, my name is Cash Donda. I lead the Uplink Working Group, which is the work group that produces these calls and a bunch of other content. Uh, I'm also the Sherpa at Super Team, the host of the Sonic Ecosystem Call. And today, I'll be taking you through just a corker of an agenda, if I can be honest here. This is, is going to be a really fun one. A lot of good focus on some product updates that are coming. But if it's your first time here, where have you been? This is our eighth time doing this, which is itself kind of crazy to me. Uh, but for anyone... It's wild. Amazing. It's like it's like every every everywhere it's like like every I feel like it's such a great routine, right? It's like um it's like every every week it forces us to come together and stuff and just like think about what we need to communicate and who to bring on and everything. So it's like just a great great vibes all around. They're really important. It is. Yeah. It's a nice forcing function, I think, for the entire community to kind of come together here as well. And it's so fun seeing some familiar faces. We got sci-fi, we got Sigrid, the crypto lord, all these folks. Uh, cryptic, obviously, uh, people that come to call out the call, we see you and we appreciate you. But if it's your first time here, uh, we are here to celebrate the people and the products that make Jupe great. So what you're going to hear about today is a bunch of updates from across the ecosystem. A lot happens in the Jupiterverse every single week. And so the goal here is just to kind of condense that information, make sure that you can stay informed, both as a cadet, as a voter uh, for Jupe, or just a you know casual ecosystem participant. We're not gonna be talking about token price, so if that's what you're looking for, the door is that way. But otherwise, stick around, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Here's what we're gonna go through today. I'll come back to that in just a second. We'll go through the wins of the week real fast. Uh, spoiler alert, the wins are banger. Then we're gonna spend a lot of time talking about some product updates. There's a lot of things happening on Solana right now, maybe you noticed, and the team is here to talk to you about what they're doing to help address some of those and make sure that Jupe continues to provide 
best in class service. We'll get a working group update uh, from the CWG talking about the vote as well, which uh, on the LFG Launchpad, and then a partner spotlight with some partners I'm very excited about. Honestly, can I be a little fanboy for a second here? I've looked up to Gauntlet for quite some time, and they're going to talk to us about how they're going to help on the Jupiter ecosystem going forward. And then we'll go right to the end with Cadets Corner. Do not miss the Cadets Corner, folks. It's one of the best parts of this whole call where we hear from a member of the community. Today we have Katoshi coming up, uh, who is great and gonna share some insights from his end before we end with the POAP. Before we get into it, uh, I did wanna give a quick shout out to a new Jupe bounty that we're putting out. It's part of our job at the Uplink Group. We're trying to create more and more content uh, to help spread the good word of Jupiter. So we have a 1500 jupe bounty for creating a product explainer video. This is up on earn.superteam.fun right now. You can create a product explainer video of any of the Jupiter products. Maybe it's the LFG Launchpad, DCA, VA, anything that you want. And the winners, there'll be three winners who will get a nice chunk of jupe for their efforts. And it's a great way to contribute back to the ecosystem. So check that out if you haven't already. Uh, I think the deadline for that will close on April 20th, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, the link was just shared in the chat as well by Shrijani. Thank you, Shrijani. With that said, should we get into the wins of the week, Meow? What do you think? Let's go. Let's run it. Let's run it. All right. Uh, so win run of the it. week. The, the first win of the week here, uh, Zeus was the very first kind of third-party LFG launchpad launch. Uh, and I think really what's worth celebrating here is that together as a community, the community really showed up for these guys. You got to say, not only did we have 180,000 people vote across the different LFG candidates last round, a ton of those people came back and actually helped the token launch be a massive success. The numbers here are honestly kind of mind blowing. Within three seconds, it was fully subscribed. $27.5 million raised by the Zeus team by using the LFG launch pad. They reached a $1 billion FTV after the launch, which is pretty incredible. But most importantly, 100,000 new holders and a lot more awareness coming through. This is what the promise of the Jupiter Launchpad really is. It is fair, it's transparent, it's DAO informed in the way that people actually get there. And ultimately it's gonna help these projects reach a much bigger audience. So drop a little W in the chat for the LFG Launchpad and for Zeus for just kind of crushing it right out of the gate. I feel, like one, one, I feel like Zeus is a really good example because I, I think um, the, whole, the whole point of RG, right, is like, um, I mean, we, 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 we talked about this before, right? But the whole point of RG is like, we want the project to community, right? Like not just um, like the launch, right? Because I mean, anyone can um, mean a new token, right? Launch it, right? It's just easy, right? You know, but actually what's actually a lot harder is like um, the entire process, right? Of like um, going to a community, explaining your project, um, getting the mm -hmm. buy-in and, and like launching it and stuff. I feel like that entire process of like, the like, entire genesis process, right? Is what builds community. Right, you know, right. So I think that's actually one reason why I think uh, we we did uh, we decided to push a launch pad in a way that is like decentralized, right? You know, and distributed, mm -hmm. right? You know, I, I feel like that's actually really important. Yeah, and I'm happy that yeah. um, and it's our first um, it's our first RG launch. Um, that's not Jupe, and it's also the worst first um, 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 you know, community driven launch, launch pad launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's pretty great, guys. Yeah, love it. I, w, let's go. I yeah. That's right. Uh, this is a big deal, folks. This is the, the Jupiter DAO is the most active DAO in the world, I believe, by a number of voters. Certainly uh, the best community, in my completely biased opinion. And so I love seeing the community showing out and helping out other projects as well. Uh, let's go to the next win here, which is that the Tensor launched on the Jupe claim pad. Uh, this was pretty fantastic. This is just kind of showing some of the strength of the Jupiter kind of ecosystem of products, uh, as well as the technical team, because they distributed $300 million worth of tokens uh, to early supporters and users across the Tensor products. Uh, Jupiter handled the infra and allowed the projects just to focus on the community and the distribution. And ultimately, uh, that's what led to such a successful launch. If you haven't already, you can go claim this. I believe it's claim.jupe dot ag slash tnsr you can go check that out and claim your tensor in case you haven't already but big shout out to the tensor team richard ilmoy legends as well as all the holders that kind of came out and used the the product here what do you think of the claim pad performance here meow no it's great i think uh, we we um uh, embarrassingly there were some major issues like getting it to work at last minute um but we we, we figured it out i think uh the the the, the and, and i think our systems handled because we we handled the when the jew and zeus right so i think our backend services were actually very well equipped to kind of, kind of handle the load right um even though there's mm -hmm. congestion going on yeah so i think uh yeah and and obviously um i'm happy it went well and happy we were able to support tensor right 
So I think the whole point here is that we would like Juke to be... Um, so Juke is all about value creation, right? I, I think that's actually mm-hmm. one thing that I was talking to Cash about, right? Juke is about like value creation. Uh, that means that wherever uh, you are on the value creation chain, right, whether you're starting a new project in users or whether you are like uh, trying to manifest the value or launch a token, right, kind of Juke wants to be there, right? You know, so I think in this case, we were, we were kind of able to work with Tensor on that. And yeah, just uh, really happy to Tensor for helping us, yeah, for trusting us, yeah. Jupiter, the value creation stack. I gotta say, I really did that. We were talking let's about go, like, let's go. It's pretty fantastic. Day, let's go. Let's go next to the the win here on the partnership side. Kind of spoiled this a little bit already, but Gauntlet has officially joined up to help make JLP even more secure. Folks, if you don't already know about Gauntlet, they are OGs in the DeFi space. I think they've published something like 27 papers, have more than like a thousand citations. Uh, They do just some of the best research in all of DeFi, whether it's around risk modeling, incentive design, and many other kinds of things. So they're gonna come on, they're gonna help improve the risk profile of JLP, make it even more kind of resilient, sustainable. Uh, And so we're gonna hear from Tharun and Luke uh, in just a little bit. So stick around to them, but big shout out to the Gauntlet team for jumping in here and helping the Jupe ecosystem. Next event, this one is very close to my heart, actually, because this I get to wear kind of like both my hats here. The Solana Summit in APAC is officially happening. A lot of work went into this behind the scenes, so big shout out to Ben, uh, to the rest of the Jupiter team, to Super Team, of course, who's helping on this, as well as Venta. Those folks are great, Ghost, and the rest of them. Uh, it's going to be the 20th to the 22nd in June. Mark it in your calendars. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. The best projects across APAC are going to be joining up. There's going to be all sorts of talks from regulators, from builders, from creatives, from everything else around the ecosystem to get you up to speed on crypto in APAC specifically. The best part, it's entirely free. This is something that's being put on by Jupiter, Super Team, Venta, and the other partners just for the benefit of the Solana ecosystem. So this is super fun. You can go to lu.ma slash Solana Summit APAC 2024 and register now. It's entirely free. Put on your calendar. It's Kuala Lumpur, by the way. Beautiful city, dramatically underrated in my opinion. So if you haven't been there already, this is a great excuse to go out. <laughs> Meow's the allergic is, to how the beautiful the city is. The, the, the food though, the food, eh. The food is, eh. This might be your hottest eh. take. Malaysian food is delicious. What are you talking about here? Eh, eh, Singapore, let's go. <laughs> so, so it's fucking like Singaporean, I suppose, yeah. Sorry, Singapore food, yeah. Sorry, sorry guys. Listen, yeah. Meow's a smart guy. He, like the rest of us, has bad opinions from every every once in a while, and this is one of them. Malaysian food is banger. You guys will love it. <laughs> Go check it out. Tons of great uh, value going to be coming over there. Uh, so yeah, if you're a Jew holder, we want to see you show up uh, and come out to the Solana Summit in APAC. So big shout out to the teams putting that together. And that does it for the wins of the week which means we are now officially ready for the product updates, folks. And this is where a lot of the attention is going to be on this call in particular, because there's a lot mm. of things happening uh, over on this side. So let me first throw it on over to, uh, where is Xiang here? Uh, to one of the co-founders of Jupiter himself, uh, GigaChad, GigaBrain, GigaDev, all the other good words that are <laughs> around Giga here as well. Uh, Xiang, how are you doing? Good, good, Xiang. Has been all since I last joined this call, uh, but yeah, happy to share what we've been working on behind the scenes and uh, yeah, everything. So obviously, infrastructure is kind of the the big discussion point across Solana right now. The network is congested. Uh, what can you tell the people about the Perps products infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, like before I start, you know, like uh, we've been, as everyone know, the network has been very congested for the last, let's say, like two weeks now. A lot of transactions are not landing. We've been getting, uh, you know, a lot of uh, protocols reaching out to us, like asking her, asking us, like, yo, like, uh, how do you guys deal with this problem? Um, you know, like, how can we, like, uh, how can we land transaction better? Like, we've been, we've been, obviously, we offer, like, we, you, you know, we try to help as much as we can, but at the same time, it's like, uh, we also have to make sure that our products working as well. Um, but obviously, you know, a few challenges that came out. Over the last few weeks, um, like I would like to address, and you know, like uh, with the community as well, and and one of the things that we've been working on behind the scenes to to hopefully make sure that uh, you know things are getting better. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's one of the real benefits of having a call like this because I know a lot of people have questions and a lot of people want to know a kind of what is Jupiter doing to help address the problem and B, how is it actually functioning behind the scenes? Uh, so yeah, can you talk a little bit more about uh, some of the problems that you're seeing right now? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, yeah. Yeah, I think I think I would just focus on the. I think everyone will share a little bit. Uh, in this calls, we have like uh, I think uh, May and uh, Pierre here as well. Uh, but I will just focus on what we've been facing on the, especially the perp, the perpetual product. 
So, you know, like the, the network has been very congested for the last like uh, two weeks now. There are a few things that uh, we've been working on to make sure that the perpetual product is working as what it is. So, like obviously we implemented the priority fees that, that has helped a lot, especially for users to submit a transaction and also for our keepers to, to make sure that uh, the transaction go through as well. Then the second thing is that uh, obviously the infrastructures, like submitting the transaction is not just like, you know, sending the transaction to one RPC. We've been building up this whole like uh, infra behind the scene right now. When a, some, when a transaction comes to our, our backend, we actually broadcast it to multiple net, uh, RPC as well. We also have this digital bundle running behind the scenes to make sure that uh, we can bundle like a few transactions together and then we pay for the team and submit it to Zito as well. So that helps, obviously. Um, then the last thing is like, uh, I think today or tomorrow, we will also let user pick the Zito tip they want on the UI as well. So let's say that, uh, you know, if, if they don't want to submit the transaction to one of our PC and they believe that they can tip higher and get their transaction through with Zito, they can just like, okay, I'm going to tip like, 0 0.01 or like 0 0.1 so and just submit to Zito and Zito will just pick it up and, and land the transactions. Um, yeah, um, and the last thing is like, uh, it's also very important is that uh, we increase the minimum uh, trading size as well because uh, we've been seeing a lot of spam, like, you know, people trying to do like 0 0.01, like, like dollar um, uh, position, which doesn't really make sense. It's actually making it worse for a lot of other traders as well. So we increase the minimum uh, trading volume, I mean, size to $10. So that helps to cut down a lot of uh, small, I mean, I wouldn't say it's like a smaller transaction I mean, position. It's just that, uh, you know, all this, all this transaction, uh, I mean, all these positions don't really make sense. So we have to like, you know, yeah, make sure that uh, other transactions land better in this case. Then obviously the worst problem that we've been having is, uh, you know, the oracles. Um, I mean, like kudos to Pith who, who have been helping, you know, like provide, providing uh, the, the Oracle solution to all products and all protocols on Solana. But obviously, you know, with the congestion that the Solana network is facing right now, they are also having problems to, to update the price Oracles. Mm. And, and for us, obviously the Oracles are very important because we are Oracle-based uh, perpetual product. Um, like now we are seeing like, you know, sometimes like five to 10 minutes behind uh, on the oracles. Usually though, when the oracle is working, we will get like every second update, maybe like every half a second update. But now we are seeing like five to 10 minutes behind. Um, mm. Obviously that, you know, it's, it's not going to be useful for the perpetual product. We, mm. we for the perpetual product to work, um, we need at least uh, actually a max three second update update from the price of Oracles. In order to address this uh, you know, problem, we actually released uh, a few things behind the scenes. Um, we actually added like a, we actually added the PIF pool solution, which is the new thing that uh, PIF has been asking protocols in the Solana ecosystem to adopt. Uh, adopt. We actually roll it out. Uh, we've been, actually, we've been working with the PIF team on it. We actually roll it out two months before the address uh, announced it. So we we actually been using the PIP pool program for the last three months right now, but um, it's it's uh, there are also some problems with the PIP pool. Pro I mean PIP pool program as well. One of the problem is the latency. Um, you know because like you need to the transaction need to get submitted on the on the on the PIP net uh, chain, which is a, a Solana SVM SVM chain that's not running on the main net. Um, then when the when the transaction gets through on PIFnet, then we adopt the we, we basically get the price data from there. Then we have to resubmit the data onto PIF, onto the mainnet, uh, Solana mainnet. So that's a high latency before the price uh, get updated on the mainnet, Solana mainnet. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, same thing with the congested network. It's also harder for us to land all these uh, PIF full uh, Oracle updates as well. Now we are spending about like 10, 20 so a day. Sometimes we are seeing like, you know, 40, 50 so a day just to submit all these transactions, all these PIF uh, Oracle, I mean, PIF pool Oracle updates transaction on chain in order for the perpetual product to use it as well. So even with that, right, um, um, obviously it helps the problems a little bit, but, uh, you know, like last week, last two weeks, 
<laughs> things are getting a lot harder. <laughs> and uh, and uh, yeah, so like hopefully, you know, uh, we can we can think about. I mean, I don't. Yeah, like we are we are we are still working on these oracle problems. Hopefully, we can share something more in in the future on 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 how we can solve this. Um, and also, um, I think the UI uh, also need a little bit of work as well for the perpetual product. Now the UI is depending uh, on the on chain data, and the on chain data since sometimes it can get like you know five to ten minutes behind. It doesn't really help uh, the UI to stay like very useful or very friendly for the users. Hmm. And the last thing, obviously, is like uh, you know what everyone be talking about GLP, GLP, uh, you know GLP, right? Um, for the last, I would say for the last two three weeks, uh, because of the congestion, you know, congestion issue, uh, trading volume has been like, uh, like I would say on the lower end compared to what we've been seeing. Um, that doesn't really help on, um, you know, like the fees that the GLP will be getting, and also uh, utilization rate is a lot higher as well, especially on SOL and BTC. When the utilization is hundred percent, means that means the trader cannot open any long position anymore that that will also uh, you know hurt the fees that the glp uh, uh lp are getting um like obviously you know like like you see like the gauntlet announcement that's one thing that uh we've been working on like for the last like two three weeks right now i mean actually two three months right now we're talking to them to see uh we've been helping them to set up their whole like uh, data like infra in order to analyze all these uh you know market risk data risk uh, market risk um to see what are the things that we can address or improve on the on the liquidity problem um i mean i'm not sure people i, I think a lot of glp holders in the discord channel uh, could see last week they actually helped us to introduce uh actually i think it's like two weeks ago yeah they, they put out a proposal to to basically allocate some of the usdc uh, liquidity to the to so uh to the soul to so i think so and btc so that helped the problem a little bit, but obviously, you know, I mean, I like our traders. They 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 they, they like to trade a lot. It's actually very uh useful. I mean, helpful for the GLP uh holders. But at the same time, it's like uh you know, the the utilization problem is still there. It's still hundred hmm. percent. Um, we are going to work with uh we are actually going to announce one more partner that we are, we are working with to help solve this problem as well. Um, hopefully, you know. I think there are things that we can do on the contract side, but uh, of, you know, obviously anything that involves a contract will require a lot longer time, a lot more thoughtful like analysts to make sure that uh, you know, like now it's like what almost three hundred million TVL right now. Every single step that we take, we have to make sure that it's like you know safe, audited. Um, uh, you know, like Gondola mm -hmm. can help take a look into it before we deploy. We have a few things in our mind right now. I think can help. But uh, obviously, um, I don't want to. I, I mean, I want to share, but at the same time, it's like uh, it's not hundred percent yet. Um, uh, That's right. I think in future, yeah, like uh, I can, I can hopefully I can share more to solve like some of these problems. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think there's a few things to call out there. Obviously, safety first is kind of the main priority of the day, particularly on perps, given the kind of scale that it's already reached. Uh, but you know, folks, this is what transparency looks like. Things don't always work properly or exactly as we might expect. Obviously, the team is doing a lot to kind of address those. And you heard a list there of four or five different things. If you're a builder in the Solana ecosystem, maybe consider uh, kind of mimicking some of those because there are, is relatively good uh, for the general baseline of it not being very good to get a transaction to land. Yeah, and also like, uh, uh, you know, like if you're, actually, any, like, uh, if you're an engineer who are looking to like solve all these problems, we are, you know, we are looking for people to join our team as well. Yeah, there's no silver bullet here, folks. It's a just yeah. a lot of hard work that's going to go into it. What yes, saying, and 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 to and to actually just add on to that, right? It's like um, perps <laughs> are actually really tricky, right? Because um, perps <laughs> uh, depend a lot on oracles, right? Obviously, right? because and also because like there are sharp price movements and everything, and then like so it depends a lot on like liveness of the oracles, right? And then <laughs> um, no, that piece and piece um, and actually for example, right, that Ishan mentioned. Previously, the whole everything, right? I uh, depended on PIF pushing their uh, the price feed on chain, right? You know, um, but that became like infeasible due to cost, priority fees, and now congestion, right? So it's just a lot of issues that makes that particular on chain push unfeasible, right? And then they created a PIF model, which is like you no, know, they push their own network, right? But then that has issues too, right? Because like you know, um, think about it, right? 
they have to, uh, the publishers have to kind of like all push to PIF and then PIF has, the PIF has to uh, aggregate and then they push somewhere else to push on chain. So it's actually a, a, a even more latency as well, right? So I think yeah. um, um, a big apologies to all users and the JRP holders who kind of haven't been able to kind of like use the product they want to, right? You know, uh, we understand that uh, it hasn't been great, you know, and yeah, we are working really hard to solve these problems, right? Uh, and, and this and this approach is like it's from both a short-term point of view and long-term point of view, right? Yeah, so uh, hopefully we have more to share soon. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and I'm also, I'm always in the Discord channel. People, you know, can ping me. Like, uh, like if I'm not replying, usually I'm just like, you know, busy at work. But like, uh, you know, if you really want my attention, just yeah, tag me. Yeah, Sean mm -hmm. yeah, is, is the most responsive ever. So just tag him. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And successful. All right. Well, Sean, thanks for coming up and kind of... Uh, you know, peeling back the, the kimono a little bit here in terms of what is going on behind the scenes on the infra side for the Perps product. Uh, with that said, we can maybe talk about the new reality that we are now in. Um, and so, yeah, maybe you can talk a little bit about Metropolis and where things are going to start to go from here. Yeah, basically, I think, um, you know, I think what's actually in important here, right, is to understand that it's a new reality, right? You know, <laughs> right? So the, the, old, the old reality was that, like, you know, there was, like, sufficient block space there wasn't that many tokens every day there wasn't like uh, you know there wasn't um, a, a thousand people trying to get the strict list every every week so you can still handle it <laughs> so essentially right it's like um so it's actually maintaining a liquidity infra right like like jupiter mm -hmm. does right um um it's actually quite a lot of things that go behind the scenes right it's like um on the on the on the on the infra on, on the infra side of, on the on the network interface side of things we have to constantly kind of be in touch with what is happening in the network layer right you know how to get the data, how to land transactions, all these things, right? And then, and then, and then on the liquidity layer and stuff, we have to maintain the full list of the markets and the tokens and 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 all the and and all the database and track of volume and everything, right? You know, and then and then, and then on the UI layer, we need to track. Uh, we need to kind of like be able to kind of um display all these things, right? Not just to our users, right? But we have a lot of partners and wallets and everything that uses our APIs. Mm -hmm. So being able to serve that data to them actually is really important, right? So I feel like um. So all that, I mean, we, we kind of kept that all under control pretty well last year. And then I would say this year things just exploded, right? You know, um, and not, not, not just in terms of um, the congestion, right? but the number of like the number of tokens just completely blew up, right? You know, we, are, we were looking at like, like from like, you know, 20 tokens a day. Now we're looking at like a few thousand tokens a day, right? You know, right? And a lot of them are like, obviously no liquidity, right? You know, but a lot of them like want to be on the liquidity. And then, uh, and also, um, like number of people applying to our strict list is also exploded. But here's the thing: the amount of spam exploded as well, right? You know, so mm. now for every, so now for every uh, popular token, there's like hundred like fake tokens, right? You know, mm. and then for every even for every semi popular token, there's ten of them, right? So I think the so so it's like everything just exploded like, per se, right? So I think um like like whether whether it's on the the network layer or our liquidity infra layer or or it is at the um the UI layer, right? So everything just kind of exploded, right? So I feel like um so um I mean I would say that um just like the post product, right? I think um we had to um in essence do like three things, right? Like the first thing to do is like okay the problem came out with fix them, right? And secondly, so we had to patch the system like uh, now and then. And but but we also had to embark on kind of like a, a much bigger like revamp of how things work. So that's actually something I've been working um uh, with the rest of the team on aggressively. And actually that's the reason why I haven't been like tweeting that much the last few uh, last few months or so. Uh, because I think uh, we have actually been kind of revisiting all our systems, right? From our backend system, keeper system, that or how we appear to talk later on about how we how we're gonna completely redo the whole like uh the way we we, we index the, the tokens and markets, right? Yeah. So, so in a sense, um, well, I think um, you know, and also one one major problem is also like um, um, uh, when new market is done, is created, right? It doesn't show on Jupiter that fast, hmm. right? You know, right? It sometimes like it, sometimes it takes like days or, or or even a week. It does a bug, right? You know, right? So I feel like um, uh, yeah. So I think it is like okay. So I think that's actually it's actually really important to um to fix these problems. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think we we made many short -term upgrades, and then now we're currently planning a full range of upgrades. You know, across the like, token list, across the market, how we index markets, how how we do our uh, transaction submissions, uh, uh, like how like how uh, the the submission process for the street list, and even the oracles, right? You know, so I think uh, we we need to do a major major upgrade right across the entire stack, right? You know, to make our products work as well as they had. Yeah, so I think that's actually this is a it's a new reality, and then um I just want to say that like uh, thanks everyone for patience. Um, 
mm. please tell us, okay, if we fuck up, all right? Uh, we, we don't always do well, uh, but please tell us, okay? We, we need everyone to tell us, right? If they're not doing, if not doing great. Um, uh, we are going to set up even more channels and, uh, and individuals who are going to be out there who, to listen to you guys, right? Um, so please, please, please tell us, okay? And then we'll try our best, yeah. That's good. So speaking of all of these tokens that are coming around here, uh, next up, I want to bring up uh, Pierre to the stage. There we go. Uh, it's me. Pierre, what Hello. You, what's going on? Man? What can you tell the Pierre people the about man, the, the man? I mean, <laughs> talk about the man. Look at this guy. This is now this is a peak man, peak masculinity right here. I got to say this is good. Stuff. <laughs> uh, so uh, Pierre, what can you tell the people about the T0 market service uh, and how it's going to help address this kind of new reality that we find ourselves in? Yeah, so the, the main thing is um, we need to rethink the, the whole process because before we were just, uh, I think, like, like most teams, just uh, crawling, like crawling periodically data. And obviously, that doesn't work because now there's even like so much data to that if you try to get it all at once, it's taking like forever. So it's like throttling and so slowing down everything. And so now our goal is, uh, our first goal is to handle uh, very quickly this, uh, those 50 tokens that uh, come up uh, every hour. And to that, we, we have to move out from this uh, crawling approach and go into a more like, uh, like streaming approach where we are going to listen to the blockchain. And whenever like people create markets, or market service will uh, uh, identify this, filter it, store it, and then stream that immediately to all the code APIs. So as a result, like user will be uh, very soon, there will be a, um, uh, the t0.jab.ag will be available on production, mm -hmm. where when people will paste their mint for the new token they want to buy, they will be able like to prepare the, the user interface. And as soon as the market is created for that token, it will stream all the way to the quote API and they will be able to suddenly like see a quote for it in the UI and buy it. Yes, yes so we are kind of like, like reducing all the intermediaries and, and like slow storage and slow crawling to make, make this possible for the user from the UI. Yeah, so the, the main challenge, yeah. So the main challenge, like, uh, it's like sort of, uh, like this identification and filtering, but then we also know that Jupyter likes to do, uh, uh, like, like, uh, optimized routing to get the best price to the user, which, which, uh, most of the time is like about splitting or going through other tokens. And if you're familiar with the Solana constraint, you, you know that uh, yeah, you, you have to compress uh, each each text using the address lookup table. So this is the step number two, where once this market is can be traded for this new token instantly, <coughs> we need to the second stage where where if it's a, a real market with enough uh, liquidity, now we are going to create all the intermediary necessary things so we can bring it in for routing so people can start to split that trade. And so this is the scary uh, diagram of the whole system. That'd be a bit hard, a bit hard to read, but uh, the idea is the, um, uh, the sort of like a stick man in the middle on the, uh, the stick man on the left. <laughs> Uh, at the top, we go from the RPC node, we get a transaction uh, that, that will stream into uh, like a market service that's identified them. And then we go, it will go into this uh, new Europa server and fan out to all the code APIs. So the, at the bottom left is, is pretty much like uh, what the user wants. Like they want the market to end up in the code API. And as we know, there's a, like the public um, Jupyter hosted API, but there's also people hosting their own APIs like traders or like liquidators or uh, even like wallets 
sometimes they decide to go for self-hosted. So all those people, they will be able to just connect to their quota API to the Europa server and benefit from this new T0 approach. And in the future, even the, I can think they could like uh, even like filter for what they want. They say if, uh, if someone is like a, a shitcoin trader, maybe they, and they want a specific token, maybe they can even ask for only a specific kind of pool. Hmm. Very cool. So, I mean, obviously this is the avalanche of tokens requires new kind of approaches to deliver that yeah. same kind of Cash. very smooth experience that people are used to seeing. Hey, Cash, can you go to a diagram real quick? Diagram real quick. Yeah, so actually this diagram, right? It's like, a, so just to give you guys a bit of a, a understanding of what goes on, right? Is that previously our, our token indexing and our token filtering and our token like uh, verification, right? And our uh, market service and everything, they just kind of live separately, right? As like different systems. Right, you know, so actually, this is actually um something that we have been working on, which is like we re-engineering the entire system to actually um you know like treat everything as like one uh one, a whole thing and a whole holistic UI, right? You know, interface and uh, not just I mean not UI on back end. Um, yeah, I think uh, hopefully um I mean this this will take um this will take a while to roll out completely and take a while to debug. So yeah, I think um and uh yeah um but I think uh, if we get it done, I think we should have the entire system. Like mm. in actually one for example, one one problem is actually this, right? It's like um the token list, right? Um long term users of our um uh, Jupiter might realize that like previously and stuff, right? The tokens take a long time to load, right? It was really fast at the start again because there wasn't that many tokens, right? But then as the number of tokens just freaking exploded, right? Like loading that the all the tokens took a really long time, right? So I think a, a a big part of that is also kind of how do we um like a, a create a much better like token indexing service that actually has the new tokens ready to be retrieved, you know, but at the same time not not having the the bulk of the like users tokens right that are like you know chunking up everything. So I think um and 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 a a, a big part of that is also around how do we kind of show the user which tokens is like um you know the real cat token right you know on the real dog token and not the fake one. So I feel like that's actually a really big, uh, big part of this whole thing as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so people can go try this out right now at t0.jupe.ag as well, Pierre. Yeah, they can. Uh, and a few people have been using it, but uh, we plan to have this uh, very soon in, inside the main UI, where if you come with your own mint and it's not from the uh, available for routing in the main API. You will just like switch and give you a warning, but it will be less effort than uh, going to a, another link because I know people on in crypto are, are scared of link links. So you, if you tell them like oh go go to this weird like t0.jupe.ag, they'll probably never never go. <laughs> I'll stick to the well for the for the DJs out there who I think are yeah are for the DJs. Like, okay. This is for the yeah DGens yeah 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so if you are in that DJ category, go check out t0.jupe.ag. Drop a little W in the chat for Pierre as well. First time on. No, drop a PA, call. drop a PA, drop a PA. I think, I think, so one thing real quick is that I'm really happy that Pierre is actually here. Pierre is actually like, a, I mean, Pierre, Pierre, um, he looks like a, a beast and he's, he's actually a beast. Okay, like, I mean, he's a guy, man. I mean, like, uh, I mean, he actually, and like, like, Pierre is actually uh, does a lot of the, like, really, uh tough like um like stuff and uh, across the whole engineering stack right you know um yeah so really happy and he has been working with like he has been no i mean he's like a co-founder of jupiter right with us uh and yeah so i think um yeah really great to have everyone meet him and hopefully he can come on a lot more mm -hmm. and he's also ultra marathoner by the way right he 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 he, he yeah. likes he loves running i don't know why he's running you know but for some reason <laughs> he loves running you know so um yeah and Cool. Well, so thanks. Uh, hopefully, really hope, hoping, hope, yeah. Hopefully, next time you come yeah. on, Pierre, you can wear the the meat hat as well. I love the fact that you have a hat that just says meat yeah. on it. Uh, even even better. That's good stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Pierre, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. yeah. I Let's go. The diagram, uh, like, oh, well, sorry, I'm kidding your transition, but I was going to say like we did the left side, and now May is going to do the right side. Well, uh, <laughs> because the, the market service leads nicely into the token service by just poking it saying, oh, how about this new token? So speaking of which, uh, we're now going to bring up a, uh, a crowd favorite of the, of the community here. Meow's boss is here, the nine-year-old intern herself, May. May, how's it going? 
Hello, hi, it's May, the nine year old intern. Oh, yes, an echo. I think that was just, uh, that might have just been meow, I don't know. But uh, maybe you could tell us a little bit about some of the challenges around the token list right now with this kind of flood of tokens that Solana is seeing. Yeah, so first of all, why do we even need a token list? Um, because in DeFi, anyone can make their own token and call it whatever they want. So for example, you can mint a new coin today, call it USDC. And if a user comes to the website and only looks at the name and a the symbol, they will be tricked. So they would have to look at the mint address in order to find out that it's a fake token. And for a while now, to guard against these imposter tokens and to help our users, um, Jupiter has validated tokens into our trick list. And today, a lot of um, people and protocols depend on our list, from wallets to protocols like bridges. And we've been running that process for a while now. Um, but today, it's really like getting to our limit. Uh, we're facing an exploding number of tokens, more than 50 like PA mentioned hourly, and definitely a backlog of PR requests that um, is driving Slot to pull all his hair out and projects are very frustrated. So what are our plans? Um, we think that we are moving to a new world that is no longer binary. So today, if you look at our UI, there is a toggle. You can switch from a strict list to the all list that shows you all the tokens. And this creates a dynamic that is very stressful for projects because it's like they have to get onto the all list to be a good coin. And if they are not, they have to get onto the strict list to be a good coin. And if they are not on the strict list, then they are a bad coin. And we don't think that is the case at all. So we want to give our users a lot more color, give them all kinds of tags and metrics about a token and let them make their own decision. So for example, there can be a Jupyter validated token. And maybe you are for another project, you are not on the Jupyter validated list, but you are a known LST coin or maybe you're a coin that's trending on a bird eye list. And all of that can be very credible signals for users. So partners, if you have a list of your own, please reach out. We would love to integrate your list and give our users a view of the entire universe. Um, and for users, we are going to upgrade your search process as well. Um, the team is working on a type sense based intelligence search that is typo tolerant and metric aware. So in the new world, for example, if there are like 10 slurf tokens and you search for slurf, 10 of them show up. We, with the intelligent search service that we are putting in, the tokens with the better metrics would be bumped to the top. So that's for users to look up, to look forward to. And I think Dixon would be on the call soon to tell you more about that um, next week. For projects, we know that the current GitHub process where we ask you to open a PR and validate your token has been very frustrating for a lot of you. And not everyone is familiar with GitHub. So what we want to build is a new UI um, that makes it friendlier and easier for projects to validate their tokens with us. So that will take some time to build, but it is something that we are planning for. And um, initially, it will start off with manual approvals by the team. But as the process becomes more established, we hope that we can also get cadets to be part of the approval process. And we can slowly build towards um, like the first decentralized token list that is powered by cats. So yeah. A lofty ambition indeed. Uh, folks, I think this is helping to kind of deliver on that fundamental value prop of Jupiter, right? Which is taking this kind of very messy, complex world of DeFi, and especially on chain where things can get very, very uh, kind of predatory at times, and helping simplify it and keeping users safe ultimately. So I love the idea of like decentralized token list sounds super fun. Having multiple lists rather than just this single binary option uh, seems great as well. And that intelligent search I know is going to make people's lives a lot easier here. Uh, Meow, anything else yep, you want yep. to say about the, the token list? No, I I feel like it's actually a really um big part of like something you would do for the ecosystem, right? You know, aka mm -hmm. like you know try to uh, verify which ones are the good and bad ones. And uh, I know like for a lot of projects, it's actually really in, like they really want to get on the street list. Um, and then uh you know um we we we're, we're, we're trying our best, you know, and I we hope that the um and again right, it's, it's not all those things that made sense like it was doable like uh, last year, right? You know, but this year mm -hmm. it's like um uh, totally exploded, right? You know um and um and um as much as you try to it's actually really hard for us to tell like you know like whether like joe Biden, right is that a coin not coin right like like mm -hmm. and then there's joe Biden and joe biden and you know everything right so i, I feel like it's actually um so we can actually really need to kind of tap on the so we really 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 hope that um um we can actually get the community involved here 
right? You know, and I, I know we have a we have a great group of cadets, uh, and that 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 could actually be a role that um they could play, right? You know, that would be helpful not just for not just for Jupiter, right, but for the whole ecosystem, right? Because a lot of, again, not not just Jupiter, right, but lots and lots of people across the ecosystem, right, are using is using this list, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think if we um sorry, I'm looking forward to the cadet list. I think it'll be fast yeah. and like super credible. Because everyone's eyes are. Yeah, on yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. I think I, 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 I really think so. I feel, I feel like if there's a system where the cadets can actually be part of the process, you'll be fucking amazing. Yeah. And, and one, one, one last question. Hey, May, uh, lots of people asking you to marry them on the chat. You know? uh, is that going to be a thing or no? You know? Yeah. Uh, sure. I accept uh, proposals. <laughs> What, what, May is what, married what, to the what, what, game, what? man. She's she's married to the to the game here. Uh, just making lives better for <laughs> cadets everywhere. I think. Looking forward to the proposals. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that, guys? Come on, let's do proposals. Don't don't, don't encourage him, Nick. Don't don't encourage him. But <laughs> anyway, uh, so folks, that is uh, the token list and what's happening there. So over the last whatever 15, 20 minutes, you kind of heard a bunch of different ways that the Jupiter team is trying to address the kind of newfound problems that exist in the ecosystem. And of course, what we're really excited about is helping to bring on uh, the community, as Jupiter has continuously done, to help make things better. And speaking of the community, maybe now we can go and talk to uh, maybe one of the working groups here. Let me put this down here. Uh, so in the working group section, we're going to talk to the core working group today. Uh, and let me bring up on stage the man with the silky voice and the silkier mustache, Kimo Sabe. Kimo, how you doing? Howdy. I'm good. I'm a little bit sniffly like meow. It seems to be in the air. Um, I'm doing great. Uh, I think we have had one of the coolest uh, week or, or set, set of weeks in, uh, I don't know, my history with Jupiter. Uh, I think, as you mentioned earlier, the big dub, uh, the LFG process seems to have worked excellently. Uh, and I, I really like to underscore that, like, the idea of a community launched token is pretty new, uh, like most mm -hmm. other launch pads. You know, they, they kind of launch everything you possibly can. And this had a little bit of competition, a little bit of vetting, a little bit of uh, community deciding what's the best project. And, you know, that could have gone horribly wrong. You know, they could have voted for something, you know, bad. But uh, I think the community selected a token and, and selected a token that, you know, rocketed up to a billion dollar market cap. And that's pretty impressive. And I think there's like ownership to take in that as a community. Like, yeah, we did a good job. Um, I think that is uh, one of the most exciting things. And we have another exciting thing coming up next uh, week sometime or pretty soon, uh, which is not only the LFG vote, but uh, the Sharky launch. Um, and then we're also working on my main focus over the next few um, probably months. We'll be working on Jupe.eco with two different cat debts, which is Antimatter and Sir Nene. Uh, that'll have work group directory members scopes uh, basically searchable as well as potentially like work group uh, bounties and, and job boards uh, additionally we'll have some DAO infos uh, vote calendars DAO orientation so that people can like, grab information really quickly and enjoy it um, and then we'll also have more LFG infos <laughs> uh, you know all of the AMAs and videos and things that we've created all in one link uh, so that people don't have to go to YouTube and go to all these different places. You can watch a video there, read the transcript, read a lovely little AI summary, et cetera. And uh, I think maybe even we'll put a school on the site at some point. Who knows? Uh, it'll be exciting. Uh, that's about all I got, though. So that is, a, that is a lot. Very nice and efficient with the time, folks. But anyone who's paying attention has seen just like the kind of the bevy of information that's around each of these LFG launches. It's very important uh, to the Dupe Down, to the Dupe community wow. in general, to be like well-informed, sophisticated voters, actually understanding how that token is going to affect the rest of the Dupe ecosystem. Because don't forget, as a part of active staking rewards, we're all kind of economically in, uh, aligned on making sure that we're selecting the best projects. So very excited for the Dupe Eco page that helps bring this to life here. Uh, Speaking of updates, let me bring on uh, the most famous slug in the known universe, and maybe in the known multiverse as well, uh, Slorg the Slugman. Multiverse. Got this multiverse. multiverse. I like how it gets uh, more more prominent every time. I wonder where you're gonna go next. I'm running out. I'm running out of stuff, dude. I gotta. I'm gonna have to like hire no, some no, writers. No, we'll, 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 we'll think of something. Name, 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 next time. Sure, catch me and catch yeah. for the call. Whatever is bigger than the multiverse. But uh, it's no, Slorg the cool, Slugman. Yeah. Member of the core working group, of course. Uh, what can you tell the people about what you guys have been cooking up lately? 
Yeah, we have four updates, but first I just want to comment on the strict list really quickly, just because that's one of the items under my purview. Uh, just for reference regarding the items on the strict list, before the latest token explosion, we were merging maybe about 10 a week, and we'd be able to have a four to five day cadence for the merges. However, at this point in time, we're having to do nightly merges and about 10 to 15 per night. Um, I just want to thank May for doing an excellent job of really going hard for the community here and keeping up with the merges. Um, but we do have ambitions to make a much smoother process and streamline process over time and build out a better UI for it. So that's just my commentary on the strict list. <laughs> Nothing better for Slorg's DMs here than uh, than this new approach to the strict list. I got to say, I'm sure they've just like flooded every single day. But yeah, we have some uh, working group items to cover. Um, four of them in fact. So we'll start off with the vesting increase. So I put out a tweet earlier today it was something we are going to talk about at the working group town hall that takes place after every LFG cycle. However, we want to address this a bit earlier, but over the last couple of weeks, we've been meeting with community leaders uh, and we decided that we wanted to properly reflect the time horizon of this work. So in response to that, we've decided to bump our vesting period of our Jupiter tokens from two years and double that to four years. Hmm. So that's the first update we'd like to touch on. The second of which is that the first quarterly update for the core working group will be on July 6th. So the core working group has a very broad range of tasks and increases um, almost every week or month. And we have a notion page with about 30 to 40 items. I think just having a sort of summary or overview or an update on that every quarter is something we agreed upon. And I think it's something very necessary as well, not just for the core working group, for, for, but for all working groups. So the first one of those will happen on the weekend of July 6th. Tonight, there will be a Sharky AMA in about seven hours. I think going forward, we'll likely have AMAs with our launch candidates, and this will be the first one of those. So make sure to attend that. And probably the biggest update is regarding the round two LFG vote that will take place in one week on next Wednesday, right after the uplink call. So you heard it here first, folks. The next LFG vote will be in one week from now. And we'll put out an announcement Breaking about news. that today. Breaking news uh, right here on the uplink call. And maybe, Kimo, you can talk a little bit about who these new candidates are going to be on the, yeah, sure. uh, the next round of voting. Yeah, so uh, we have two new candidates from AMAs last week, and then we'll be publishing uh, their AMAs uh, later this week. But uh, the first is a competitive AAA shooter with cats. Um, well, cats and mech suits. Uh, <laughs> they've been wishlisted on the uh, the Epic Games Store and actually peaked at number five most wish listed. Uh, on the Epic Games, uh, I think it's, uh, what is it, the launcher, uh, which is very exciting. And they're also the only Web3 game, uh, I believe, on that list. Uh, they also have 400,000 registered users um, and then 220,000 unique active wallets. That is Nyan Heroes, if I hadn't said the name. Uh, it looks like Cash has pulled it up and it's loading. Uh, but very, very cool. Uh, their trailer is on their Twitter and also YouTube. Really impressive, really well polished, and uh, yeah, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's exciting, and the cats are really cute, and you can jump in some mechs and shoot some people. Sort of, uh, uh, kind of a you know, was it Overwatch style battle royale? All sorts of good stuff. I might play. Um, kind of distracting. I really like it. And the second one we introduced last week was uh, DSID, aka Solana ID, and they're building a digital reputation system that allows users to earn and uh, sort of control their data. And this is really interesting from the perspective of like data privacy and also owning your data on the blockchain. And the idea of like, data is the new oil, we should probably be able to control our faucets or our uh, oil rigs. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, uh, they are sort of aggregating a huge amount of Solana transactions and grabbing meaningful data from that. You'll also be able to aggregate other uh, platforms, Web2 platforms, and link those to your wallet, and then sort of control your own data faucet 
prove that you're a human on the blockchain. So this solves interesting things like, uh, for example, botting, botting a launch, any sort of launch. Uh, there can be a provable, unique human behind every wallet. And it kind of uses proofs and all these really cool little ideas uh, around, yeah, I'm a human and I make interactions like a human, not like a robot. Uh, so they're very exciting. And yeah, uh, those are the two ones. We also reintroduced three from the first round. And then, uh, as I, who is the last two? Might it be an infinite LST future? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sanctum. Uh, yeah. The yeah. infinite LST future. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I think everybody already knows Sanctum. You've already used Sanctum. If you've ever touched an LST, you've touched a protocol that they've touched. And uh, it's deeply, deeply exciting. And that's about it. Excellent. And then along with these kind of new candidates, the old there's some old candidates that are grandfathered in from the last yeah. round as well. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Monkey Dex. Uh, I believe it's Monkey Dex. Um, I'm blanking right now. Sorry. <laughs> Uprock. Uprock. And my favorite of all, the uh, giant global power plant. Uh, sourceful. Sourceful. Yeah. There we go. Uh, so, folks, tons more of information is going to be coming coming down the pipe. Uh, you can check out the Jupe Discord, the Jupe Research Forum. There's going to be threads on Twitter. There's going to be tons of content coming through. Make sure to go to the YouTube page as well. We have interviews, both short form and long form, with all of those candidates, uh, including Solana ID, Sanctum, Nyan Heroes, uh, and everybody else that uh, Kimo just mentioned. All right, folks, with that said, let's move on over to the Partners Spotlight uh, over here. And these are some folks that I'm very excited to have on uh, because they've been kind of big brains in the ecosystem for a long while, uh, kind of pioneering a lot of the way that people think about risk uh, in DeFi. And so first up, we're going to bring up the most colorful person in all of crypto. Tharun, how's it going? Hey, how are you? Uh, excited to be here and uh, super, super excited to, for the first time in a long time, hear someone pronounce my name correctly. <laughs> Indian Brotherhood right now. I know. I was, I, I, was right like, I was like, yeah. I was like, I had to like double take to, I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Aaron, what can you tell the people about Gauntlet? Obviously, you guys have been so around. How, wait, wait, how, how, how to pronounce it? How, how, how to pronounce it? So, so, so Indian names always have hidden H's. So if you see a vowel, there's like an H either before or after it. That's like the, the like simple, simple way of uh, thinking about it. So the correct way is Tharun, but honestly, no one says that. I, I, and Tharun. that's why I'm like shocked whenever I hear it. I mean, I usually just, you know, use the anglicized version of Tarun, but it's, uh, you know, I, I got to say, I, I was very, very impressed. Your, your, your hosting that? ability, you like... <laughs> You're able to swim in and out of pronouncing, you know, Sanskrit words in English. <laughs> Listen, my last, name, the man. my last name is Danda. I made that little H visible, so I have the same kind of thing. It's not like Danda; it's a Danda with that little thing. Anyway, sorry, that's neither here nor there. Amazing. Yes, uh, yes, tell yes, people yes. All, all right. about Gauntlet. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, excited to be here. Have uh, have loved watching the community grow, and um, so so Gauntlet. We've we've been around since. 2018, we've focused on kind of understanding what risk means in proof of stake and in DeFi. We've written a lot of academic research on this topic. We've then spent a lot of time um, optimizing protocols. So what we do is we we do a lot of simulations. We take on-chain data. We make models of the different types of users. And then we run these simulations that sort of let you say, OK, with this composition of users and this parameter, say like a margin requirement of 10% or a a fee that's you know 20 basis points here's the outcome you get like the the jlp pool you know earns 30 63% but you know one out of every 5 million blocks you there's some a loss so it's a way of sort of being able to take these systems that ha are kind of complicated have many different agents involved you know there's like everyone from the jlp holders to per people who are holding long and short positions to liquidators, arbitrageurs, you know, the entire ecosystem. We spend a lot of time trying to model that, understand what they're doing, understand their incentives, and use that to, to help, you know, adjust parameters and, and adjust sort of compositions of things so that you get better capital efficiency or better security. And so we spend a lot of time thinking about this stuff, um, you know, but we also are 
you know, our, our team is made up of a lot of people who worked in trading or work in trading. We've we've all traded perps before, and we've spent a lot of time really trying to understand what things uh, can can help you take leverage safely, help you help you be a hundred x Bowden, but also not <laughs> blow up. Uh, you know, due to to any any kind of unrenowned things. So, you know, I I would say that like we've historically worked a lot in the lending world, adjusting parameters on some of the bigger uh, lending protocols, as well as in, in proof of stake. Um, but yeah, I think really excited to to kind of dive into Solana perp ecosystem. I mean, I think the fact that you're having 50 new tokens an hour already says like, there's just like <laughs> insane demand. It's like a kind of very cool data set to work with. And uh, I think, you know, my colleague Luke here can actually can dive into more of like the precise modeling we're doing. Is so, so, so any... before be, 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 before that, real quick, right? So I just want to drop a a, a, a shout out to Tarun uh, and Gollet. Um, it's actually pretty amazing because like um, we are a few years in DeFi right now, right? And it's I would say that like um, it's only now that people are starting to understand the, the a lot of risk parameters and modeling, right? But um, uh, but but Tarun and Scholar, they way ahead of the game, man. It's like right the right right ahead at the very beginning of the whole POS, the proof of stake, and all the all the DeFi, everything. They were right ahead in kind of trying to figure out and actually put in the proper models and like systems and research what these things were, right? You know, um. So been a big fan of them for a long time. Been reading their stuff for for a long time. Uh, across different across all the different domains. Yeah. So um uh from uh for all of us at Jupiter, I'm really happy to be working. Okay yeah, that's what I'm saying. Super. Yeah, and, and and similarly, like have have appreciated a lot of the stuff you guys have done over the years. Um, but like I said, L Luke can 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 dive into to a lot of the, the Jupiter specific stuff. Maybe they call him Luke during the day, but I know on crypto Twitter he's got an even better name, which shows his real kind of just perfect sweet spot for what he's about to talk about here. Please welcome to the stage, Perps Jesus on uh, on Twitter. Luke, what can you talk about? Oh my about god, the really? That's yeah, his name. Oh name. my god! What the hell? So it's an amazing name that was uh, that was created in house, but starting to uh, populate it up on Twitter, so or more publicly. But uh, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, really excited to engage um, formally with Jupiter on the Perpetuals product. Have seen a tremendous amount of growth since the protocol has launched, and we're seeing a tremendous amount of growth. I think industry wide and really bringing Perpetuals on chain. Um, and so, mm -hmm. high level in terms of what we'll be working on. Um, creating a tailored methodology specific to the JLP in terms of the mechanisms as well as the parameters that um, are implemented in uh, Jupiter's PERPS protocol. Bringing it and integrating the um, protocol of subsequent data all the way from accounts up to headline metrics into our systems to provide the appropriate monitoring and subsequent modeling uh, through time and developing systematic risk models that will help align parameters on the Perpetuals venue with broader market, um, broader market sentiment and positioning, as well as tune any realized um, realized suboptimal outcomes and ensure that parameters are remaining aligned and in, in their optimal state uh, in a continuous fashion. And we're doing all of this in a continuous, uh, you know, systematic um, systematic fashion in a way that's trying to reduce any type of latency from market regime shifting or market disruptions and making sure that that quickly is implemented and aligned with um, with parameters in the state of uh, the JLP. In terms of uh, a level down, uh, level down analysis or our, our kind of broad methodology, really we take a user-based approach with, um, with perpetuals. And there's very much offsetting interest between the two core agents of liquidity provisioners, those who are providing, um, uh, providing liquidity via the JLP and, and traders. And if we can maximize the probability of both traders as well as liquidity provisioners coming and utilizing the, uh, the venue, knowing that they have offsetting interests that will continue to grow or trigger that liquidity flywheel effect, which uh, you know, Jupiter Perps has, has succeeded very well on thus far. Um, J JLP holders really need a adequate risk adjusted return for both the price risk they are exposed to, as well as the temporal risk they're exposed to given that perpetuals don't have a, an expiry date. Um, traders, however, want very deep liquidity, they want very low friction, and they want um, ac uh, efficient access to leverage um, via their exposure. And so we built and developed models that helps align essentially those incentives of these agents in a way that creates this optimal state to continue to safely grow 
the overall protocol from a TVL volume and open interest standpoint. And so uh, we're very, um, very much looking forward to engaging with the community, providing ongoing risk assessments and parameter recommendations along the lines of trading fees, borrowing rates, asset composition in the LP, as well as um, TVL and open interest caps to ensure that we can safely and um, prudently grow the protocol. So very, very excited for um, this engagement and looking, uh, looking forward to continuing to engage with the community. I got to say, uh, folks, this is serious business. Obviously, perps are, are no light work. They take a lot of work, as uh, Xiong was saying earlier. Makes me feel even better knowing that in addition to the Jupiter team, Gauntlet's on board here as well to kind of fine tune these things and make sure that everyone stays Sapu going forward. Uh, so if you haven't already checked out Gauntlet, you can just Google them. You can listen to Tharun on the Chopping Block podcast every week, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Uh, I am a yep. listener myself, so I recommend people check that out. Uh, and broadly, uh, Jens, thanks so much for coming on. Meow, anything else you want to say about Gauntlet? No, nah, the coolest, the 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 coolest guys around on the block. And uh, Taro might not remember, but I met him in New York like way back. I remember, like, I remember way... at uh, the beer garden in Williamsburg. Yeah, oh, who never God, forgets? That's so funny. No, I, <laughs> then, no way is like, bro. Remember that? Okay, cool. Yeah, oh, then, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ben, yes, Ben, no way is like, bro. Yes, that, yes, yes, yeah, yes, Ben, yes, yes. yeah. wow, that was yeah, like it's amazing before crypto. Yeah. That's way before crypto. Yeah, and I was like, amazing. I was like, I mean, like, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? It's the fucking coolest guy I've known, man. Fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but Thank you for it's the funny to come together, nice. right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. Right. Um, We're gonna yeah, need to do. Uh, uh, I think we'll need to do like a planetary call after dark so we can get all the stories about young Meow and young Thurun <laughs> and what they were like back in their Hellraiser days. That'd be interesting to see. Exactly. So cool. Yeah, well, gents, thanks so much for coming out. We'll uh, we'll keep the progress moving, and we'll see you guys in Discord and all around. Sounds Thank good. you very kindly. Thanks. All right, folks, that takes us to the last section of this call, which is just a fan favorite. Drop a little W if you're still with us here in Discord, and YouTube, and Twitter, wherever you might be, as we head into the cadets' corner. And today we have a mighty fine cadet, if I may say so. Uh, we have the man himself. Katoshi, Katoshi, how are you doing? Katoshi, let's go, my favorite. Katoshi, let's go. Hey, for Jay, it's an honor to be here. Hey, for Jay, let's go, Katoshi, let's go. Oh yeah, bro, it's it's an honor to be here repping the cat desk this week. I really appreciate the opportunity. And well, uh, behind, we appreciate you, want... you. Yeah, awesome. And behind me, I want to give a shout out to Jupe underscore Eco on Twitter. Um, they've got all the info on the DAO. Uh, great community page on Twitter uh, run by hi I'm Tim and Sir Nene so uh, shout out to them shout out indeed well we appreciate everything you're doing for the Jupe community as a loyal cadet here maybe you can start off by telling us how you kind of got what your background like and how you kind of got integrated in the cadet community yeah man so it's been a long strange trip and uh, I know that we're short on time so I'll keep it short and sweet um, but basically I've been spot trading for the last like five years dabbling in crypto mostly getting wrecked on the exchanges with really high <laughs> trading fees, uh, just trying to work through things uh, during the bear market and you know establish a successful uh, trading strategy. And I really started getting serious into trading about this time last year um, when I moved some assets over to the Solana blockchain and discovered Jupe. Uh, so I've been a daily user of a uh, Jupe aggregator uh, since then. And it was a game changer for me because you know, being able to do swaps with minimal slippage and save every dollar you possibly can as a bootstrapping uh, spot trader was just the difference between success and failure for me. So I appreciate you, Meow. I appreciate the team so much for the hard work you've done to create this incredible tool for traders. And since then, I've just been a huge fan and spreading the word to friends and family and trying to get everyone in. Uh, and then once, you know, you set up the DAO and uh, the cat death space and, and did the airdrop, I mean, it was just uh, a huge opportunity for me. So I'm all for it. I'm a, I'm a huge D-Gen Jupe fan for sure. <laughs> I love your shit, man. I love your shit and your, I love your shit and your background, man. It's so fucking amazing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I yeah, this is my, uh, my cat deaths. <laughs> my cat deaths <laughs> uniform, bro. And talk about masculinity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, you, when you've got a hey, cap. Fuck yeah. Oh, there we go. Fucking amazing. We go. Oh my God, it's so great. <laughs> Holy fuck. Holy fuck. 
You need a you zero thing on the left. That's that's the you need to rock a cute cat on your shoulder for real. Oh my <laughs> god, that's it's great. Hey, 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 Kentoshi, could, could you like take a selfie and stuff and post it and stuff? I'll, we'll, we'll tweet the fuck out of it. <laughs> that game is so great. Uh, no, yeah, no, I like this. Like, this game is perfect. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, so great. That's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, awesome. Well, yeah. can I tell you, maybe you can talk a little bit. I love to hear the stories of how people kind of came. Oftentimes you use the product, you see that it's great. Now that you're kind of firmly embedded in the community, how do you see your role as a cadet? And what's kind of like your mission behind all of this? Yeah, so, you know, have, being a daily user, you know, I'm, I'm more of an expert than a lot of the newcomers. So I'm in Discord uh, helping, you know, new cadets uh, come on board and understand how to use uh, Jupe and, and, you know, what a powerful tool it is for trading. Uh, but mostly it's just about having fun and, and sharing the knowledge. And I think we're, we're in a period of time where the paradigm is kind of changing um, with DeFi, where it's, it's less of a, like, in order for me to win, you have to lose competitive vibe and more of a, if I win, we can grow the pie together, um, you know, through positive vibes and, um, you know, just sharing the knowledge. So if I have a trading strategy that's working for me, I'm willing to, you know, share it with the community of cat debts. And I want to see everyone be successful. And I want to talk to people in price trading and uh, unmonitored on Discord. And here, if you have a... <laughs> Such a fucking DJ, bro. <laughs> that, that's the trenches right there, folks. No, it's, it's, right. it's, it's actually really important. It's actually really important that uh, what, what Katoshi is saying, right? It's like... um. Um, I feel like you should tweet that and, re and I'll retweet that, right? Because um, I feel like um, the, the game is changing because um, it's like um, it's changing from the like, adversarial game whereby it's like uh, PvP, PvP to like, you know, PPP, right? P uh, peer pump here, right? You know, right? Um, whereby I, I just made it up, right? You know, PvP to P PPP, peer pump here, you know, right? Haha. -ha. Um, but yeah, I think the idea, come on, guys, laugh a bit. Um, but but I think uh, the, 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 the whole point here is that I think uh, like, um, it's true that I think um, the world is starting to realize that we can create a lot of value, right? You know, by being supportive and growing communities, right? Um, and actually, at Jupiter, we're all about that, right? At Jupiter, as um, a, a cash. Remember that we talk about value creation, right? The value creation stack, value right? Stack. There you go, right? So it's actually um, it's actually a big part about. I mean, and 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 that's what we try to do for IMG, right? Per se, right? Uh, we try to kind of like get a critical mass of people to be aware. And kind of like give like legitimacy to a project, right? So that so that better, long long term value creation can happen, right? And then at a at a at a more um and at a more granular level, I think we uh, we have a lot of cadets who are out there who are involved in different things, right? You know who are all talking about like what are great communities are forming, who are uh, and and it can, it can be because it's a great Bitcoin, great community, or like you know mm -hmm. great tanker tanker project, or like you know great foundation, whatever it is, I don't really care. Right, you know, but I think uh, like being able to kind of like uh, recognize that like uh, value is value is created in the community, and we are moving from a, a a PVP situation to a PPP situation. Right, you know, I think that's terrific. Yeah, I think people like the PPP uh, framing. I've seen in the chats, uh, kind of love it. Hannibal saying pushing PPP over here. Drop a little PPP if you're into this pure pump peer mentality, like uh, like Katoshi and the rest from here. Uh, Katoshi, any final words for the cadets and the rest of the community on kind of where you think people or how people can get involved and what you'd like to see people do? Yeah, I mean, it's easier than ever. Now I can pretty much teach my grandma how to uh, get involved and, and, you know, get into Solana and start trading, uh, you know, with welcome.jupe.ag. It's so easy. Uh, you can get started on there, uh, get on Discord and start talking to us and, uh, you know, we'll all just help each other out. We're all learning together. And I, I like what Meow said in the last one, um, that as soon as you think you're an expert, you're going to fail. And so, you know, I've yeah, failed yeah, a lot. Truly, truly, truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've learned a lot of lessons and I want to help other people. Uh, you know, I've struggled, you know, to trade for three years, but, you know, I've, I've started doing better and I want to help people bypass that three year of struggle um, so that we can start growing the pie together. Because when we're successful, you know, we can we can uh, grow the pie and um, bring more awareness to Jupe and how powerful it is. That's right. That's that cadet mentality there, growing the pie, helping other people out. Head into the Discord. Go find Katosha. He's all over. He's at, like you said, he's in the trenches. True DGen. He's there to help you uh, and others figure out what to do next. Now you may be able to up your game. Not financial advice, of course, uh, but a valued community have member. Fun, man. Guys, have fun, have fun, have fun, have fun. I, I feel like just have fun, man. It's like, don't, uh, don't take yourself too seriously. 
I think every um at Jupiter, I, I'm gonna tell something, man. Every time we every time we think that okay, we got this, man. The the tech stack is done, then things die. You know what I'm saying? All right? Like I'm not yeah. come kidding, man. It's like just I think just have fun. You know, it's cool. Yeah. And I think what's cool about the cadets, they kind of turn crypto from like a single player game into a multiplayer game, you know, and it's like it's more fun to play games with other people as well here. So definitely, go check out the Discord. Definitely, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, if you, we, we, we really want, I think my my ultimate dream here is that like my ultimate dream here is to have a welcoming community, right? Because of mm-hmm. the only way, um the only way DeFi is gonna grow everything is like if you have a welcoming community of people who uh, welcome the newcomers, right? And and treat the newcomers not as a competitor but as a friend you know i feel like that's mm-hmm. the ultimate thing you can do yeah that's the cadet so you want to become a cadet head into the discord start helping some people out add some value and you too might find yourself oh, I'm a you're my uh, you're a fan now. Kedoshi, you're a big fan now i'm a big fan of now fuck it let's go big fan official fan Ju- let's go Excellent. Satoshi, or Katoshi, thanks, Satoshi. Katoshi, thanks so much for coming out and for being part of the community. Uh, folks, that is going to be about it for us today. Obviously, we went through a bunch of different things from product updates, how we're dealing, how the Jupe team is dealing with the kind of massive influx of action, congestion on the Perps product, as well as just the sheer number of new tokens. We got to hear from the central, wor- the core working group in terms of what kind of updates they're making, some new LFG launchpad candidates, as well as a little bit of a retro on the Zeus launch that just happened and absolutely crushed it thanks to you, the community. Got to hear from Gauntlet and the ways that they're helping make JLP even more resilient and secure for users all around the world. And then, of course, we got Katoshi, the cadet, embodying that spirit. The last thing here is the not-so-surprise PO app. And I got to just say, she does not like when I call her out. But that's only what makes it more funny for me to call her out. Uh, Shrijani might be one of the, the better artists on Solana these days because she just makes banger po up after banger po up here. Uh, so if you want to get this beautiful piece of art in your wallet as a way to commemorate this awesome call, all you need to do is scan this QR code, fill in a few simple questions, connect your Twitter or your Discord just so we know you're a real human. Because these things are very attractive and a lot of bots want to get them. We only want the humans to get them. Uh, note, this is for members of the community. So you need to have at least 50 jupe staked on the wallet that you're submitting in order to get the PO app. And that, due to some network congestion, will come to you over the next few hours. It won't come right away. So you can scan this QR code right now. Three, two, one, to get this lovely PO app here. It's good stuff. Meow, <laughs> the quiet meow in the background as well. Uh, folks, thank you so much for coming out. Make sure to follow Jupiter. Make sure to join the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is growing fast. All the latest content is getting posted there first, youtube.com slash jupe-ecosystem. And of course, get into that Discord and start chatting as yeah, well. And, and it's a long, it's a long, long call today. We cover a lot of ground from product to That's technology, true. to tech stack, to LFG, to to CWG, to um, you know, to 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 cadets, to Katoshi, to Gotler, to like everything, right? So really appreciate everyone for joining us on this call. It's a long call, right? You know, but uh, thanks Cash again for being such a great host. Yeah, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Yep. The best. We'll play a little closing music. Oh, oh one more thing, one more thing. Uh, oh, I, I I recently okay. I'm sh- I shared that I'm gonna be speaking in Token Two Zero Nine, right? We're gonna oh, have a lot of fun. We're gonna have a lot of fun. Yeah, you know that. Nah, don't come on. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> we we are we are gonna have a lot of fun announcements that day. Um, like lots of fun announcements, right? And uh, we're also Jeez. gonna have a a cute new anima to introduce. So yeah, I think I'll see you guys there. Yeah, a lot of stuff coming up next week, folks. I uh, I cannot stress that enough. Some major major announcements. So stay tuned for all of that. Uh, we will catch you on the next one. I'll play a little closing music, Jupiter's Universe, as people start to filter out. Jupiter, blasting out of the universe. Need to loosen up a deep in my pursuit of the cat that am I cool enough? No, probably not. I'm still moving up. That's a money bar while sitting at the computer. And yeah. Mission moves along Gonna make it easy for them all To come and get involved Station nation been going up Volume isn't my middle name Still see me in that order book Need to learn to trade the patience And maybe then you'll start to cook But still I swear I'm always chasing I'm dumb as fuck We don't blow it up Jupiter, blasting out of the universe Need to loosen up a deep in my pursuit of the cat that Am I cool enough? No, probably not, I'm still moving up That's a money bar while sitting at the computer, yeah
Gonna make it easy for them all to come and get involved.